Well, they want to know 3.24 liters is how many quarts, and of course they give us our key because this isn't a very common conversion. So it says that one quart is equal to 0.95 liters. So the problem is that with questions like this, it, it all goes down to a matter of multiplying and dividing. But sometimes people have a hard time deciphering which to do. Um, some people have different shortcuts if they know they're going from a smaller unit to a bigger unit or a bigger unit to a smaller unit, but I prefer to set up my ratio so I can visually see um, the units canceling out and I can actually see the conversion happening in front, happening in front of me. So, if we go about it step by step, I always recommend that we write the value that they give us first. That's always going to be on my left hand side. So I was going to write it out first. And then we're going to write the key that they give us in parentheses. I'm going to color coordinate so you guys can actually see the difference. Alright, so first things first, is whenever you're trying to solve, you always want to write the unit that you start with first, or whatever's being converted. So that's going to be written on the left side. Is that your left side? Yeah. 3.24 liters, right? And we're going to multiply that times the ratio that they give us. Now, in setting up your ratio, um, you guys need to know that order does matter. So even though they say one quart is equivalent to 0 0.95 liters, that doesn't automatically mean that the quart is going top. In this situation, that's what happened. But that doesn't mean it's always going to be the case. You're going to know how to set it up based on where our units are. So if I know that I start with liters, I know that in my key, my liters, when I write it as a ratio, it has to be in the denominator because these two are going to have to cancel out. Okay, and they're diagonal because they will cancel out. And it has to be like that because we're going from one unit to the next. So I'm essentially, I'm eliminating my liters and it's going to leave me with the quart, which of course is the general idea of the whole conversion, all right? And then from here, we're gonna fill in our numbers. So I know the key says that one quart is gonna give me 0 0.95 liters. So normally, um, when I teach this, I always tell people to negate the one. Like we don't worry about the one. And we notice because these two are on different levels, meaning that 3.24 is at the top and the 0 0.95 is, is at the bottom we automatically divide, but that still is a little confusing for the people. So what we're going to do is we're going to come, we're going to change this to a fraction. Anytime I want to change the number to a fraction, if it's not already one, we're just going to put it over one. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to treat it just as if we are multiplying fractions. And whenever you multiply fractions, you're going to multiply straight across. So we're going to do 3.24 times one, and that's going to be at the top. And we're going to do one times 0 0.95. All right. Probably that a little smaller. Just so we can see the math as we're doing it. Bear with me as I rewrite it real quick because I want to make sure you guys are actually able to see the math that we're doing so that it doesn't confuse you guys. All right, so first things first, I'm going to make, well, we already did it, the 3.24 a fraction. And then anytime we're multiplying fractions, of course, we just know we multiply straight across top to top, bottom to bottom. So essentially, I'm going to do 3.24 times 1 on top, and then 1 times 0 0.95 on the bottom. Okay, so just to show you guys again what I did. What I did was I created a fraction, so I made my first given value, I placed it over one to make it a fraction, so I know I can multiply straight across. Now, because these are the same units diagonally, these liters are going to be canceled out, which is just going to leave me with the quarts, okay? So we do 3.24 times 1, that's going to give us 3.24. 
and one times 0 0.95 is going to give us 0 0.95. Now, because this is in the form of a fraction we want to solve, a fraction is the same thing as division. So we're doing 3.24 divided by 0 0.95. which gave us our answer of 3.411 quarts. Okay, so that's definitely another way that you guys could go, go, go by doing it. If you don't understand the concept of them being at different levels or the same level, if you go ahead and write it out as a full fraction and multiply straight across, um, you will know whether you have to end up dividing or multiply, okay? And I'll give you guys another, we'll go through another example. I'll do two more examples just to show you guys how it could flip flop, if it could be one way, if it, if it could be another way, and then we'll go from there. All right, but I did see a couple questions. I did get a couple inboxes about that specific question on diagnostics, and um, I don't want you guys to be alarmed. It's super common for people to have problems with converting between standard units. I see it all the time. So it's not really like a really big deal like that. We just have to make sure you get enough practice so that you aren't struggling for a really long time. All right, so let's try this one. So the question says 16 pounds is how many kilograms? And the key says that one pound is equal to two, is equal to 0 0.45 or 4,500 of a kilogram, right? So this is our practice question. And I'm doing two additional practice questions for just to clarify so I can show you guys how it works every single time just to be able to help y'all, okay? All right, so first things first, anytime I have a conversion, I'm always going to start out with whatever they want me to change. That's always going to be written on my left-hand side. So we're going to start out with that. Alright, so real quick, before I fill in my values, I filled in my units first because I want you guys to see how you have to do the setup. So if we started with 16 pounds and my pounds is up top, if this is what I'm converting from, which means which means I'm changing from pounds to kilograms, the pounds from my ratio has to be on the bottom. Because the idea is that these two are going to cancel out, which is going to leave me with the kilograms, which is what we're trying to do, okay? And then we're going to go ahead and fill in our values. So I know that one is for the pound. And I know that 0 0.45 for our kilograms, all right? And we're going to go ahead and place a one under here to make it a fraction. And then we're just going to multiply straight across, okay? So we're going to do 16 times 0 0.1. 0 0.45, and then we're going to do one times one. All so if we do 16 times 0 0.45, that's going to give us 7.2, and one times one is one. So of course we know 7.2 divided by one is just 7.2. And anytime we have a fraction, of course we want to break it down, we just divide the top by the bottom. So the answer is 7.2 kilograms. Got it? So if we start from the top, this is the original conversion that they gave us. It said 16 pounds is how many kilograms? The key says one pound is equal to 0 0.45 kilograms. So I always start out with my first value. I know that I have 16 pounds that I started with. I just put it over one to make it a fraction, just as a placeholder, right? All right, then, this has to be written in a particular way, okay? So it's not always going to be whatever comes first is on top and whatever comes second is on the bottom because in this case, that wasn't it. What happens is if we see that we have pounds here, I know that in writing my second ratio, the pounds has to be on the bottom because these two need to cancel out, okay? Because we're converting from pounds to kilograms and that leaves me with kilograms, okay? And then from there, we just multiply straight across and that's just like multiplying fractions. So I do 16 times 0 0.45 and one times one, that gave me 7.2 up top, one on the bottom. Of course, we divide it to give us our whole number and the answer is 7.2 kilograms, okay? 
right, we're gonna try another example. Cause I wanna make sure the idea is that we have to retain it, right? You have to get in the groove of doing it step by step by step. And I always tell everybody, anytime you guys are prepping, especially for a test, you have to find one way that works for you to execute it and you have to keep doing it that same way. You can't get to a question like converting, right? And you do it one way this time and then you get to another question, you do it another way. No, we have to lock in that one thing that's gonna work for you so that you're working efficiently and you're not tricking yourself into believing that I can do this sometimes and I can do something else another time. Just do it the same way each time so that you're not overthinking it. That's gonna be the best way to practice. That's definitely going to be the best way to practice because that's what's going to be the most beneficial to you as a student. So the next question says, 65 grams is how many ounces? And the key says, one ounce is equal to 28.35 or 28 and 35 hundredths of a gram. All right? So this is the question that we're starting out with. And first things first, we, we always write what they give us first. We're gonna write that first, okay? And we can start out by writing it as a ratio if that makes it a little bit easier for you. So I know that I have 65 grams and I know that when I'm writing my other units, I know that if I have grams on top over here, the grams have to be on the bottom over here which means my ounces is at the top. So remember, I like to fill in my units first so I know I'm moving in the right direction. So I started with 65 grams. I know before I even fill in my values that grams has to go on the bottom because these two need to cancel out because I'm converting from grams to ounces. And when those two cancel out, it'll leave me with ounces. All right, and from there, I can fill it out. So I know one ounce is gonna be equivalent to 28.35 grams and then from there we're just going to multiply straight across so we're going to do 65 times one and one on top and one times 28.35 on the bottom okay so we'll do 65 times one and we'll do 28.35 on the bottom oh and just for clarification before i forget remember because the grams are diagonal these two are going to cancel out which leaves me with the ounces which is our goal so when we do 65 times one that gives us 65 and 28.35 times 1 gives us 28.35 so that leaves me with 65 divided by 28.35 which gives me 2.29 ounces I hate leaving markers up under this dry out so bad. All right, so one more time from the top. So we always start with our original conversion. So let's say 65 grams is how many ounces. So I always write my 65 grams first, and you can go ahead and write it as a ratio over one, just to create that fraction for you. I know that in setting up my units, that if I start out with grams here, grams has to be in the, den the denominator in my second ratio because they need to cancel out. All right, so that left me with 65 grams over one times one ounce, and that's based on my key, over 28.35 grams. Our grams are gonna cancel out, which leaves us with ounces, which is great. And then we just go ahead and do our math. So 65 times one up top, one times 28.35 on the bottom, which leaves me with 65 times one is 65. 28.35 times one is 28.35. And of course, since it's in fraction form, we have to divide it out. And that leaves us with 2.29 ounces. All right, so, if you guys are having a really hard time from my first video, I really hope that this video helps to clarify. If not, please feel free to give me feedback and let me know. And we'll just give you another method and another method and another method and another method <laughs> until you get it. But the, the gist of it is, before you give up on the methods that you guys have seen, try it a couple times and make sure that you understand how to execute it. That's going to be the key. The key is making sure that you understand how to execute it question after question after question after question. It shouldn't be a space to where you can get the first two right and then you miss the next one. No, you should be getting all of them right. And even if you make a mistake, you have to be able to go back and identify what mistake you made and you have to fix it. That's the goal. Goal. <laughs> That's the goal. The goal is to make sure that if you make a mistake, you're able to go back and understand why you made a mistake and you're able to fix it, okay? It's okay, I make mistakes all the time. Sometimes I'm doing math and it just looks really fuzzy and I'm like, what am I doing? 
you know, but as long as I recognize how to fix the issue, it's all fine and dandy. So anytime we go over any topics and you guys feel a little, a little woozy, just comment and I'll go live again and do another video. I don't really like explaining the problems in the comments because it's so much harder for me to type since I have so much stuff to say. So of course, feel free to inbox and let me know. And of course, if you guys need more practice, the book is definitely available right now. You guys can inbox me for additional details. And I'll see you guys in a few for our next video, which is determining the relationship between two variables.